It was then I realized that the Martian had a purpose other than the destruction of humanity. The curate and I stood frozen for a moment. Then we turned and fled. When the curate began to complain of faintness and thirst, we entered a white house within a walled garden. We found food in its pantry. There were two loaves of bread, an uncooked steak, and half a ham. I list these things because we would have to live upon this door for the next two weeks. Bottled beer stood under a shelf. There were two bags of green beans and some limp lettuces. In a cupboard, we found a dozen bottles of wine, some tinned soups and salmon, and two small tins of biscuits. We sat in the dark kitchen, for we dared not strike a light. We sat in the dark kitchen, for we dared not strike a light. We were eating bread and ham when the disaster happened that was to imprison us there. First, there came a sudden blinding glare of bright green light. It was soon followed by an explosion such as I have never heard before or since. With a crash of glass and a rattle of falling bricks, the ceiling came down upon us. I was knocked to the floor. When I came to, we were in total darkness. For a moment, I could not recall what had happened. Don't move. The curate whispered, "Any movement will make a noise, and I fancy they are just outside." We both stayed silent. Just outside was a metallic rattle. For three or four hours, until the dawn came, we scarcely moved. At dawn, it became clear that the greater part of the house had collapsed. Through a jagged gap in the wall. We could see a towering Martian. It was clear that he was standing guard over a still glowing cylinder. The fifth cylinder, I whispered. The fifth shot from Mars has struck this house. We are buried under the ruins. I heard the curate whimpering. Except for that sound, we lay still. I scarcely dared to breathe. From outside, I could hear a metallic humming. Then came a violent hooting, and then hissing. For many hours we crouched there. At last, we finally slept.